So we'll look very briefly into time-based testing. What do I mean by time-based testing? If you look at our application, there's a bit that I'm sure you remember where we, where we say every few seconds uh, generate this bunch of values. And this is one of our sources, right? It's something that lives at the very beginning of our pipeline. Every few seconds, we generate a new value or a new set of values, as in this case. If you look at the signature for every, it's a function that takes in, let me go there. It's a function that takes in um, a period and then we'll um, call the block every few, every every period and publish to an outstream. If once we receive an interrupt, we stop, uh, we stop uh, producing values and we close the downstream uh, channel. So how are we gonna test this? So I'm gonna be write, writing a test that might look a bit flaky. It might be a bit flaky indeed, but what is important is that we uh, gave it a go and then we can, we can think about how we can reduce the flakiness another day. So I'm gonna be describing, putting this at the top of the, the file. I'm gonna be describing every. Uh, it should generate values every given interval. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna write our own usual. So our statement is gonna be something like every, say, let's call it interval, say the interval is 0 0.2 seconds, just to make it so that the test is not too long, because in this case, we are indeed depending on the uh, duration of our interval in, or in terms of how long the test is gonna take. I'm gonna say every interval and I also need to define an, inter an interrupt uh, channel interrupt, which is what we're gonna use to signal that we don't need to generate values anymore. So it's gonna be channel dot, dot new. We're gonna be passing this in. And then we pass a um, an enumerable really is, is what we need to produce. I can say one, two, five, for example my favorite example today. So this is gonna generate five values every 0 0.2 seconds. Now, if you look at the implementation of every, you will notice that we will actually wait for an interval amount of time before publishing the first time. So what happens if I, uh, and I'm gonna call this um, uh, outstream. So what happens? if I receive on the down on the downstream twice. Right, so if I receive on the, well, <laughs> on, the down, on the downstream twice, what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna read once, it's gonna be number one, I'm gonna read twice, and that's gonna return number two, right? So if I were to say should equal, this will return one. And if I do it again, that should return from window that should return two. Okay, and then what I can do is, if that's the case, what I'm expecting to see is that we start generating at a time that is time UTC, or well, not really. We we launch the the fiber at that time, and when we complete, we expect the final time to be something like time UTC minus start which returns a very conveniently a time span and then we can say should be close i think be close is the is the expect in the name of the expectation which is one that wants a reference value which is going to be 0 0.2 because two, 0 0.2 seconds have, have passed i can call it i can just say interval and then we can give it a um a delta that is going to be the interval the the, the the interval that is going to be considered as acceptable for our test to run with success. And the delta is going to be interval, we can say interval over two divided by two, which is a fair enough approximation. We think we give some uh, gauge uh, to um, let 
the runtime do its thing in case there's some uh, some um, some stuff taking more time than expected and then uh, we uh, validate that it is indeed taking this this amount of time let's see what happens on the test and you can see the the test was successful i'll show you something else if i now do the same thing but just six times without running any expectation do you expect this to pass or fail well the idea is that this will this test will fail because this time the interval is going to go to 0 0.4 because we're generating the first five five values in the in, in after 0 0.2 and then the second set of values is going to come at 0 0.4 and we're expecting the interval to be between 0 0.1 and, and 0 0.3 let's look at the test failing there we go we, we, we it took 0 0.4 but actually we were expecting a value between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 so this is a good uh, way to show that we need to be careful about this time-based testing uh, and but also the, it shows the fact that every is indeed working as we expect. I would recommend that we actually write a couple of tests for uh, a couple of tests for every. So one is going to simply check that we can indeed generate a bunch of values. One could say zero to sorry one to five dot map or actually each and take each value i and run an expectation for each one of these. Uh, just to write something like this uh, and then I invite you to also write another test where we take where we go one extra interval because one really doesn't tell as much and so the interval is still is 0 0.2 but this time we're gonna generate uh, we're gonna receive a bit more so we're gonna receive up to 10 for example uh, and this time we know that it's going to be twice the interval the time that we have to wait because the second batch of values is going to come at 0 0.4 or around 0 0.4 okay so now we know that our every function works i'm going to go back to our presentation so i'm going to mark this as done in terms of dealing with a time-based test you can see that as much as we are actually testing something concrete we're verifying that the interval between uh, the start of our uh, spawning our fiber and the completion of our fiber is taking the expected time uh, at the same time we are uh, wasting a lot of time in when we're running we're running the test because we know that this test is never going to take less than 0 0.4 seconds so we need to be cautious about how much um, uh, latency we add to our test oh i'm gonna be showing you one more thing about every uh, we define this interrupt channel that we're passing into the into the stream uh, the reason why this is interesting is that you definitely want to verify that whenever you interrupt so if you do you generate five values and then you interrupt so you go interrupt dot send nil which is uh, what we do to signal that every should just uh, shut down and at that point what I can do is that is verify that the process indeed terminated before going on and also I can verify that the downstream channel which is outstream is closed so I can receive with a question mark because I don't know when it's going to be closed in exactly and then verify outstream is going to outstream dot receive question mark is going to return uh, nil as soon as the channel is actually closed and then I can verify the fact that the channel has been closed with a should should be true and this is really it uh, in, on, on the side of testing our um, uh, testing our every method. Uh, I can also go and edit this a bit, the, the description a bit. So one is should generate values in uh, every given interval. Uh, should um, or better should generate the first uh, value after the interval given interval this is going to serve as good documentation for whoever is going to want to use the the same function so it's good to uh, give them something readable and understandable this straight away says don't expect every to generate uh, a value 
straight away, you're going to have to wait until uh, the end of the interval for to in order to see the first value. The second description actually works, should generate values every given interval. And then finally, uh, we can say should close the downstream channel when uh, the interrupt um, is signaled or something like it. Okay, so we're done with the time-based testing. 